Well, uh, last summer I uh, provided myself with the opportunity to do a month on the Appalachian Trail. And uh, I'm just going to skip ahead to the end real quick. I, uh, I got lost uh, on the Appalachian Trail last summer. And I, I started on the 17th of June, and I was going to the July 17th, and the day I got lost and hiked 32 miles was uh, July 16th. So um, kind of an unfortunate event. And I'll try to add as much humor in this as I can, but it was such a stressful, uh, stressful time for me that well, I'll give you the message at the end. But uh, I, I was up in Bear Mountain, New York, right around the area um, at William Bryan Memorial Shelter. I remember leaving that morning early. Uh, it was a 10-mile day, uh, pretty easy day on the trail once you get used to it. Uh, and I left, uh, left camp, uh, had my one Snickers bar. I always started the morning off at the Snickers bar. That's also why I had three cavities by the end of the trip. <laughs> Thank God I didn't do six months. But um, I, I was hiking with, uh, shoot, I have to intro this too. When you're on the trail, you, you develop a clan of fantasy characters. Um, they're real people, but you, you get a name on the trail. And I had friends, I, my name was Pickup. I always picked up the pace. You, you earn your name. Uh, we had Passion Flower, Voltron, so I come home, Mom, Dad, meet my friends Passion Flower and Voltron. <laughs> Money well spent. So, we get some interesting names on the trip. So, I'm hiking with Roboticus in the morning. Again, <laughs> yes, I thought it was the weirdest thing ever for the first like week on the trail. Um, we're hiking together for about a mile. We come to the Palisades Parkway. I, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, and there's a, a little gas station, whatever, fill up right down the road. And I say, oh, I'm going to go fill up my water for the day, get a couple Cokes, and uh, be on my way. So she hiked ahead. And my name is Pickup. So, you know, pick up the pace. I'll get there. Uh, we were going to meet at Bear Mountain Zoo. Um, so she goes up ahead down the trail. I go like a half mile down the highway and uh, get my water and everything. I get back to the trail and I go half a mile. Um, please don't add this up, by the way. I hope it hits 32 miles by the end. Um, so I get back on the trail, I'm walking, and I come to, uh, well, there's no more white blaze, which is what the Appalachian Trail is marked with. And then there's a blaze. It's like white with a red circle in the middle or the other way around. And I knew they were doing construction on the Bear Mountain, like the stairs going down. It's this amazing like rock stair thing that I never saw, so I don't know if it's amazing. But um, I'm like looking at this new blaze, and I'm like, you know what? I was an art major. I'm super smart. Um, and football, right? So I'm gonna, this must be the blaze that like gets you back to the trail, because they're doing uh, construction on the trail. So. I'm so much smarter than the Appalachian Trail people. I'm going to take this new trail, hence the getting lost part. But I'm going, I, I'm going back and forth, testing the trail out to see like where it's taking me. And I finally decide this is the path I'm going to take today. And I'm now like six miles into it. I had two ridges to go over, looking at the, um, looking at the map for the day. And I got over the first two ridges, a little bit nervous. And I, I wasn't eating, because I was paying more attention to uh, you know, where I was, or where I was not going. Um, <laughs> and I get to the third ridge, and I start to realize you know, something's up. But you know, those elevation maps aren't always true to their uh, whatever demeanor. Is that a good vocabulary? <laughs> I told you I played football. But, um, <laughs> so I get over the third one, and I'm really starting to get tired. But I'm not drinking my water. I'm not eating any of the food that I have, because panic starts to set in. And, when, and this was a new feeling for me. When you start to panic and you're lost, you really start to forget about the things you truly need. And on the trail, the only things you need are food and water. So I get to my fourth ridge. And this is the point where I'm like <laughs> climbing up the hills. And we've all been there. We've all like just done that excruciating physical thing that just <laughs> trying to get up and you're starting to talk to God and, and uh, everything. So I'm really feeling bad for myself. And I get over that fourth one, and I have like one more to go after that. So let's, let's start jumping ahead, because we're just going to keep going up and down over these things. I, I was crying, OK? So, 
so I, I finally, 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 and this is like, I, my heart just was like, I was so proud of myself at the time for getting out of those woods because I really just started going into survival mode and I was getting dehydrated. And I come out onto, I can't remember the name of the highway. We'll just, I'll just call it the Bear Mountain Highway. It takes you to the bridge. And I realize my phone has like, it's blinking the battery that it's already out and it's starting to, it's like four o'clock. So I figure out where I am on the map and I'm too good of a person to hitchhike in a state where it's illegal to hitchhike, which is so stupid when you're like trying to like survive. So I found a rails to trails where the old train tracks are turned into like a path and I started hiking down that about eight or nine miles. And uh, the only thing that really kept me going, I, I was eating um, wild like raspberries or whatever on the side of the trail and it, got me through. So I come to uh, the highway. I have like three or four miles to go. I didn't know that um, to the zoo. And I run into this like watering hole. And I walked up on the hole. And there were these people like, I literally heard the music like, like they were like beating in hand, jumping into the old swimming pool. Like, and I wanted to join them, but I asked them for directions. I thought they were messing with me when they told me, like, oh, it's right up ahead. And I made it back to Bear Mountain Zoo. This is 27 miles-ish, or 28 miles into it on a 10-mile day, so. <laughs> I probably would have quit the trail the next day anyway. Um, and I get to the, uh, the main part of the zoo, uh, Spice Man and Rhino, a couple of retirees, they, uh, they had to come back because one of them dropped their mouthpiece uh, from their water thing. Oh, that's such a kicker for the story. Um, and I, I, my first like, thoughts to get food, so I go up to the counter and I give, the, I give um, the girl, not my credit card, I give her my order, and I'm like, oh, can I get three grilled cheeses and just a ton of food? And they start making it, and she's like, okay. That'll be whatever. I give her my card, and she's like, she could tell I was like ready to like die. And she's like, oh my god, we don't take plastic here. It's just cash. And I'm like, all right, can I just have some water? So I couldn't, I couldn't hold my water down, and I couldn't hold my food down because I, you know, if you don't eat for long enough, you start to dry heave. And Spice Man and Rhino, and this is where the story. This is where it's sort of the message from my story. I, of course, I was into the wild. I was on the trail. But um, they got me through the next four or five miles to our camp, along with the rest of the crew that I was hiking with, um, carrying me and just keeping me on their shoulders and stuff. And these are people I met less than a month ago from Germany and from uh, Florida and Oregon, and we're all different ages. I was the youngest in the group, and they helped me get up a mile, thousand foot um, incline, 30 feet at a time, because I kept cramping up. And I guess, and we had Volchon <laughs> come back, and uh, he, he walked back two miles. He got my bag for me, he, and everything that I was carrying, which was like 40 pounds of stuff, and uh, they just, I don't know. I think what you want to take from that is these people I met on the trail of all different ages, and this is sort of how I learned to really talk to adults and feel like we're all equals now. Um, I always just felt like a kid. Um, just think about when you're walking by people down the street, uh, how much of an uh, inspiration you can be for them, or just you're capable of helping people that you don't even know, and they're capable of giving right back to you. So that's my story of uh, going into the wild. And <laughs>